Hi everyone, welcome to my video series on identifying outliers in dataset. In my previous videos, I have discussed how to identify outliers in dataset using Tukis Hinge's approach, stem and leaf plot approach, and bus plot approach respectively. It is important you see those videos to also learn other ways of identifying outliers in your data. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to use scatter plot to identify outliers in a set of data using XPSS. My name is Titoken and this is Titoken Math Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. Please, let's encourage education and learning by subscribing to this YouTube channel and thanks for doing so. Now, I will continue with this same data I used in my previous videos. This data is already loaded into XPSS as usual and it consists of only one dependent continuous variable length. If you don't know how to load data into XPSS, please use the link I gave in the description section below to see my videos on introduction to XPSS for beginners to learn how to load data into XPSS. Now, let's proceed to identify outliers using scatter plot. Go to the menu bar and click graphs. From the sub menu, click chart builder. And then a quick instruction pops up. As a beginner, you can read the instructions. Otherwise, you can go straight and click OK. And immediately, the chart builder dialog box opens. In the box on the lower left corner, click on scatter dots. And then click on the first box, which is the simple scatter, and drag it to the canvas at the top here and drop it. Now, in the variable box at the upper left corner, click and drag your variable length to the y-axis box and drop it. And then click and drag the id variable to the x-axis box and drop it. The id variable is the observed points of the dataset. Then click OK and the scatter plot is produced immediately as you can see. Now, double click anywhere on the scatter plot to open the chart editor. On the chart editor, click this icon for show data labels. And immediately the observed ID points are overlaying on the scatter plot. Close the properties box and then close the chart editor. And the main scatter plot in the output window is immediately updated. As you can see, there are three data points that are located at some distances away from the main data stream. These data points are the outliers. The outliers correspond to ID number 15, 8, and 22. The lower outlier is at observed point 15, while the extreme outliers are located at observed point 8 and 22, respectively. And when you return to the raw data, the observed points 8, 15, and 22 corresponds to 69.01. 2.97 and 69.79 respectively, which were the same outliers identified when I used the same data set for the Tukis hinges approach, the stem and leaf plot approach, and the bus plot approach in my previous videos. You might have to see those videos to learn the different approaches. The links to the videos are given in the description section below. Now, what can we do to the outliers identified in our dataset. There are many ways to handle outliers in dataset. One of the most common methods is to delete the outliers permanently, especially on the condition that they are imputed by error and they are not supposed to originally be part of the data. So let's assume that the three outliers we just identified in this scatter plot were entered into the data by error. So I will proceed and delete them. To do so, hold down the control key and click on the row containing the outliers to highlight them like this. Then, right click on any of the highlighted row and from the options that pop up, click clear to delete the outliers permanently. Now, your data is clean and free of outliers. To be sure the data no longer have outliers, let's quickly make a new scatter plot.
As you can see in this new scatter plot, there is no data point staying outside the entire data stream. This data has recovered from the grip of unwanted outliers, and as you can see, all the data points have similar trend. So the data is now clean and free of outliers, and you can now receive this new data as a free outlier data set. Right now, we have come to the end of this video, and I hope you can be able to replicate the procedures as demonstrated in this video for your new set of data. If you like this video and you want to see more video content like this, please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that we begin to send you notification every time I publish new and useful content. Subscription is free. Thanks for your time and subscription and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.